Welcome to Contemporary Instructional Design. I'm your host, Tamara K. Owens, and I welcome you to join me as we begin to explore the world of open educational resources. This topic includes a wealth of material worth discussing, but in order to keep this podcast shorter than War and Peace, we'll cover only a small portion, such as a definition for open educational resources, commonly referred to as OER, open licensing, and why OER is a really good idea. So get comfortable, relax, and let's get started. In its simplest form, the concept of Open Educational Resources, also known as OER, describes any educational resource, including curriculum maps, course materials, textbooks, streaming videos, multimedia applications, podcasts, and any other materials that have been designed for use in teaching and learning. These are openly available for use by educators and students without an accompanying need to pay royalties or license fees. The most important reason for harnessing OER is that openly licensed educational materials have tremendous potential to contribute to improving the quality and effectiveness of education. OER is not synonymous with online learning or e-learning, learning or e-learning, although many people make the mistake of using the terms interchangeably. Although use of OER can support open learning, open education, the two are not the same. A common myth about openly licensed content is that it belongs in the public domain and that the creator gives up all of their rights. This is simply not true. The emergence of open licenses has been driven by the desire to protect copyright holders' rights in environments where content, particularly when digitized, can so easily be copied and shared via the internet without asking permission. A popular open license nonprofit organization is Creative Commons, which offers several simple open licenses for creators. Creative Commons provides user friendly open licenses for digital materials. These licenses take account of different copyright laws in different countries and allow for different language versions. To make the licensing process possible, Creative Commons uses a license generator to suggest the most appropriate license based on a user's response to specific questions regarding how their work can be used. All of the CC licenses include basic rights that are retained by the creators, asserting the creator's right over copyright and the granting of copyright freedoms. Within this framework, the CC licenses allow creators, in a user-friendly way, to grant other people the right to make copies of their work, and if they wish, to allow other people to make changes to their work without seeking permission. The CC licenses also allow users to apply some restrictions on these permissions. Uh, for example, requiring attribution of the authorship of the original work, or restricting reuse of the resource for commercial purposes. Now that we know how open licensing can work, let's talk about some potential benefits to OER adaptation. Increased availability of high quality, re relevant learning materials can contribute to more productive students and educators. Because OER removes restrictions around copying resources, it can reduce the cost and time spent to achieve access to educational materials. Allowing adaptation of materials provides a mechanism for students to be active participants in educational processes who learn best by doing and creating, not by passively reading. Content licenses that encourage activity and creation by students through reuse and adaptation of that content can make a significant contribution to creating more effective learning environments. Investment in designing effective educational environments is critically important to good education. A key to productive systems is to build on common intellectual capital rather than duplicating similar efforts. Collaboration can improve quality. And as education is a contextualized practice, it is important to, it is important to make it easy to adapt materials imported from different settings where this is required. And this should be encouraged rather than restricted. To conclude today's conversation, let's think about cost. While it isn't always about the money, very often in education we find that it is about the money. Traditional textbooks are often highly priced as they include royalties that must be paid. 
OER materials can be produced and disseminated at a much lower cost. This translates to a huge savings to students, educators, and generally anyone who takes advantage of these open educational resources. Consider this, however. While these materials may be free to end users, they are not free to create, develop, or to let loose upon the world. It takes time and education to create quality material. And as we all know, time is money. Hosting the content requires server space, curation of the content, updating, revising, and so forth. All of these require funding somewhere along the line, whether it is absorbed by a creator, an institution, or a foundation. My suggestion is the next time you see a donate button on a site that has provided some useful content to you for free, think about throwing some money into that virtual hat. Go ahead, press the button. I'm Tamara, and thank you for listening to Contemporary Instructional Design. You can find me on Twitter at IBTech underscore T underscore Owens. Sources for today's episode include a basic guide to open educational resources made available by the Commonwealth of Learning. It was prepared by Neil Butcher and edited by Asha Kanwar and Stamenka Yuvalik Trumbek. Soundtracks were discovered at the Free Music Archive. They include Un by Scott Holmes and Subtle Library by Fabian Measures.